I want to get this one on video real quick. Uh, this is a top loader repair. Well, this is one that I actually haven't seen before. Um, it came in black screen. Um, first check voltage. I was only getting like four volts, so I thought it was the regulator. Changed it. Same thing. Got up the heat gun, and the PPU was really hot, so I replaced the PPU. That didn't work. Um, of course, I put the chips in my test board and found out that not only was the PPU bad, the CPU was bad and both SRAM chips are bad, but even though I get a boot screen on the power pack, the buttons will not respond. Making me believe that the uh, 373 may also have failed. However, if I put in my test cart for joysticks, it works fine. I mean, it's like start, everything works. So that makes me believe that the controller interface chips are fine, but possibly just that 373 has failed and caused this one weird little issue. But I'm going to dig in a little bit here and find out for sure. Okay, pulled the 373, replaced it with a new HC version, and still nothing. I mean, it's a weird one. You know, I'm pushing start, whatever, no response. That is super weird. I don't know, maybe it is a controller interface chip. I'm going to put the uh, non working one in the test board and see if it does any different here. My guess is it will not, but we'll see. Okay, with the 373 out of the bad board, it does respond. So it was not the 373. Well, I also pulled the little 74 one, or, uh, yeah, 139, one right next to the 373, and I get response for the power pack on the test board with it, so it's not bad either. Unfortunately, something else. And just because I want to be sure I'm getting 21.47 megahertz on the clock signal, so. That's not a problem. I didn't expect it to be, though. Okay, so I contacted the owner of the board, and he doesn't want to put any more time and effort into figuring out why the power pack doesn't work. He doesn't have one. He's not going to use it. So, whatever. I'm not going to waste more time and money trying to figure it out. I am going to try to fix the door. It kind of sags. You know, it won't spring all the way back up. I'll just wind the spring around another time, hopefully, get that going. But something I might want to show is there is a very very tiny crack right here which is very common to get cracks up here but this one is so clean and so small that what I might be able to do is just run a little bit of hot air over it uh, from my uh, soldering rework station and make it look like it'll just disappear. I've done this a couple times before with success I'm not really sure if I've ever showed it on YouTube though so I'll show that. Um, not really much to show with the spring um, and after that, I think it's just going to go back together and go back to the customer with the new CPU, PPU, and SRAM chips. That was definitely an easy fix, not worth showing. Uh, you can see it comes all the way back up real easy. That was just the prong that comes back and touches the front part was bent. So I just bent it back and now it works fine. So let's go on to the hot air thing. Let's give a look at my uh, hot air station. It's nothing special. It's one of those knockoffs from China however the hell you say this, A-O-Y-U-E, it's a 909, it's got, um, it's got a kind of a power supply and a soldering station built into it kind of a thing, which is why I bought it a long time ago because I didn't have a power supply and I rarely use it anymore, but it comes in handy once in a while and it's just a regular hot air gun with, you know, switchable tips on it for different things. I I bought some of those tips. Maybe I'll show it to you here quick. These tips are supposed to put the heat like for a dip chip or something like that to put it right on the legs. It was rather expensive and completely useless. I really hated it. The slots are not even and the heat didn't spread evenly and it just just didn't work for me. So I went back to just using the 
a little nozzle like that on most everything and it works just fine. So I'm going to clean the top shell and then dry it off and then give this a whirl. Okay, let's see if I can get a real good close up of this going on. There's no real trick to it other than stop <laughs> when you when you see it go away. Um, if it's dirty, it's probably just going to accentuate it worse. I think I've done one where I just tempted it, attempted it when it was, you know, more visible and a little dirty, whatever, and it, it just made it worse. There you go. That's about as good as it's going to get. Any more than that, and it'll just make it worse. I can already kind of see it starting to show a little better. Now it looks more like a scratch than a crack. There you have it. One last thing I want to do is check to make sure it works with the EverDrive because if it doesn't work with the power pack and this guy wants to resell it, it might be something he'd want to mention that it works with one but not the other. I'm not real positive. Let's see. Okay. Up and down works, B works, start works. Okay. Excellent. So I'm done with this one. <laughs>